Hello everybody, I am so excited today to be welcoming the wonderful Jane Gleason White to join me on this podcast because I have for quite some time wanted to invite her on here because Jane is an intuitive astrologer as well as a writer and she's passionate about the transformative power of words and stories and symbolic language, which is how she found an interest for astrology. And she's also very gifted with maths, obviously. And she and I have been talking for many moons now. And we seem to have this beautiful synchronistic relationship. And funnily enough, I asked her if she would join me for this podcast at the exact time that she conceived a desire to be on the podcast. So I'm really, really happy to welcome you here, Jane. Um, it's really great to have you. And now I just want to give everybody a little clarity as to what it is that we are embarking on with this series of podcasts that we're actually going to do, because Jane really wonderfully offered up the idea of traveling with the moon over the next six months because as she puts it the moon is our closest celestial astrological being and the symbol of our emotional selves our mothers and our capacity to self-mother self-care and tune into the way its cycles and energy affect our inner emotional tides and I wanted to share that with you all because I think it is so perfectly sums up a real need in our society, particularly as women, as we make this transition into this new way of being, which is much more divinely feminine oriented. And I think, well, at least I know from my personal experience, and I'm going to ask Jane to share a bit more of hers, but Personally, I have found it really challenging to understand even what the divine feminine is and let alone how to more fully embody it, especially when I came from a very corporate background into this far more spiritual, energetic work. That was a really steep learning curve for me and something that I'm still very much in the journey with and weaving into my embodiment. And and Jane, I would love the listeners to hear from you about how you came into your relationship with astrology, because I feel it's very much aligned with your relationship with your understanding of the feminine. Absolutely. Thank you, Kay. It's so wonderful to be here. Actually, yes, it was not even so much that I suddenly decided I would be on this podcast, but I suddenly decided, because I think I'd already agreed to that, um, that, I, that it was really time to talk about astrology and the new moon in Libra, which is coming up, is the perfect time because it's the first moon in the southern hemisphere of the spring. Um, but yeah, I feel I've had always a really close connection to my body, but no real way of understanding it intellectually or in a bigger, bigger cultural context. And one day I happened upon a book and, and it seemed significant that I just literally just got married. And this seemed to become a more urgent question because it felt as if I was, I mean, very willingly with the man I married, but very unwillingly in this institution, this patriarchal institution of marriage, which I felt really, really strongly. So it seemed an urgent moment to look more deeply into myself as a woman and the first book I found, and it became my Bible actually, was written by Vicki Noble called Shakti Woman. And ironically, she'd been having arguments with her husband about the Jungian feminine because he was a psychoanalyst. And she couldn't get anywhere with her arguments. So in a sort of violent fit one day, she went off and started to sort of look into herself. And that night she had a dream about the book that she would write, which was all about the embodied feminine. And so I read that, like, you know, it was, I was coming home. And one of the main practices that she recommends in her book, apart from tarot, is astrology, because it is a way for women to connect to um, the moon, which was the original sort of astrological being that the early astrologers connected with, the early astrologers in her telling being the women with their 13 um, month or you know every solar year there are 13 full moons and therefore 
menstrual, 13 menstrual cycles. So the correlation between a woman's menstrual cycle and the moon um, is very clear, as is the relationship between the word menstrual and moon, because they're both derived from the same word. So it's all connected, as is the word month. So this, I like these complex interactions, and this became hugely significant, significant to me. And I should just add that about the next day after reading Vicky Noble on astrology, I went into a bookshop in Newtown, put my hand down on a table, picked up my hand, and underneath was an ad for a course on moon-centered astrology happening right up the road, you know, the next week or something. So I just signed up. Amazing. So one of those serendipitous moments. Yes, which, you know, from my perspective, I feel you have so many of, to be honest. <laughs> um, I think, you know, this conversation is going to be such a powerful opening for a lot of women into a new concept of what it is to be a woman. And I know that, you know, understanding your relationship with your body, particularly your womb, is super challenging for lots of women, myself included. I've had a whole journey around that. And, you know, a lot of clients that I've worked with have issues around their ability to fall pregnant. And even women who are, you know, who have fallen pregnant or are pregnant, their connection with their child, their connection with the idea of being a mother is sometimes really challenging because, you know, we're so disenfranchised from our femininity in so many ways. So um, I'm really, really, really glad and feel that this is absolutely, in fact, the perfect time for us to be having this conversation. Oh as particularly, um, you know, we, we are seeing the divine feminine becoming more and more entrenched in our day-to-day -day existence through people's, you know, increased fascination with all things spiritual. That's a massive, you know, uh, reflection of the divine feminine becoming much more embodied. And, and it's, you know, what we're witnessing here is the planet as a being, as a soul being, raising its energy. We are the filaments around that planet that are, you know, physically manifesting the vibration that's coming off this planet. And it's, you know, we get so caught up in our self-importance and it's just really important to remember that we are embodied experiences of the energy that's all around us. So having this increased connection with these celestial bodies around this planet can only be a really powerful thing for us. So um, that's really exciting. What I would like to do is just give listeners like a rough understanding of the idea that we have here in terms of every single month. So we're gonna look at the new moon and the full moon and essentially how the energy of the the moon will affect us is that right it's more but so really what we're looking at is two pairs of astrological signs so each astrological sign is a polarity and this month we're looking at libra and aries they're the two um first well so aries is the first sign of the zodiac and in the northern hemisphere it marks the start of spring but we're marking the start of spring with its opposite sign which is Libra so we're looking at those two pairs the right. first and the seventh sign um, and we're looking at where that energy of the new moon and I should say up front you know the new moon is a very beautiful powerful time to set intentions because it's bringing a new energy into a cycle and the full moon helps us to see you know where that um, how that intention is going and sort of work with that intention but really the intention that we set at this Libra new moon won't come to fruition until the Libra full moon in March next year. So it's a beautiful cyclical, and that's the other thing that I love about it. This is time in cycles, you know, the cycles of nature, which we're, you know, because as well as tuning into um, the feminine, we're all becoming much more close, reconnecting with our connection to the natural world and plants and animals and everything. I mean, it's been very evident in the last two years. Um, so each month we're looking at those two pairs, every single moon will be spoken about during the six months. Um, the more we can, I guess, be in conversation with the moon, we can release old fears and habit patterns that go right back to our childhood. And that really frees up, you know, our psychic connection, our intuition, our playful child, all the things that may have been shut down in our various ways of growing up. 
you know, because this is very early childhood energy. This is mothering energy. Um, so it's really, really powerful energy to work with and to bring to consciousness, which is exactly what this time is all about, bringing the suppressed feminine to light. Mm, amazing. Okay. And balancing it. And it's in men and women. So, so the two things that will happen every month is you will get to feel this new seed intention um you know so this month it's libra um with whatever you know is going on in terms of the intentions that you set okay so we're basically going to travel this energetic wave every single month of this mm -hmm. kind of new spring energy with this new moon and then right through to completion in the full moon which is how we're going to see this kind of manifest and, and come to fruition. Is that yeah. right? Yeah, well, it's more that it will be illuminated because the real manifestation, the real harvest happens six months on with the full moon in the sign of the new moon. So when there's a Libra full moon in March next year, that will be the real culmination of this period. But um, yeah, so the, the full moon in Aries will bring new themes to light it's an illuminating energy and also releasing energy you know so it will ask us to let go of things that are no longer necessary okay. and no longer service so it's just a beautiful you know monthly cycle of intention setting illumination releasing and then you know going on you know which is exactly what our bodies as women do every single month if we're menstruating you know we make new life we it either gets um germinated or not and we or we make the possibility for new life and then we release it so mm. our womb cycle is so consonant with the moon cycle and it's just very beautiful and empowering i just want to go back to what you were saying earlier Kay, about our women's bodies because you know one of the things that sent vicky noble off to write this book was having experienced childbirth, you know, and thinking, well, I'm empowered women, woman, women have been having children for thousands of years. And here I am, you know, in the 1970s or whatever it was, mm -hmm. strapped to, you know, um, legs sort of irons with forceps and, you know, the full with men thinking that they know better about how to give birth to somebody else's child than the mother herself. And that was hugely enraging for her, despite, actually, it must've been a bit later. It must've been in the eighties because she says, you know, despite two decades of feisty feminism, this is still what's going on. And that's a huge part of my interest in it as well. We still, despite all these decades of feminism, we don't really own our bodies. I mean, we know what happened this year in America in terms of the abortion laws, you know, women are not sovereign over their own bodies. Um, no. So this is another way to kind of, but also because one of the greatest taboos is menstrual blood, you know, I mean, you know that very well. So, mm. I mean, this is extraordinary, powerful energy, the menstrual blood, you know, so I really loved that about Vicky Noble's work as well. So I've always been, I've had a happy relationship to my body and Vicky just made it seem like a way of, of really empowering it to make it a powerful force for sort of shamanic healing. Yeah. Amazing. I think, you know, I'm sure that listeners are either like cheering us on or, or potentially being really triggered actually by what we're talking about because of, you know, conditioning around how women show up or how we should talk about our periods or the blood that, you know, we shed every month or not talk about it. I held so much shame around my periods for years. Um, and, and also our vaginas. I mean, there's so many conversations around this that birth really, control, you know, which exactly, is so the whole thing. And it's, it's brilliant though that all this light is being shine shone rather on all of these aspects. The one thing that might really bring it home for people is something at least that I've become very passionate about. And, and that is actually how we as women show up in our relationships with men. Well, because... Perfect for this new, new moon. Oh, really? Okay. For, it's course, the relationship it's... sign. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> because, you know, this was something that I personally, this was probably my first really transformational um, experience in, in recognizing that by giving my power to my partner, actually, I was jeopardizing our relationship. And it was only when I took my power back and embodied my power and held it that actually our relationship really became balanced and powerful because the reality was 
he didn't want all of that power. <laughs> and, and a lot of the time, men want direction. And actually, when we withhold our power, when we withhold our feminine wisdom, our intuitive knowing, then we're depriving ourselves of actually a really powerful, balanced, awesome relationship. And, and I think that, you know, even watching my own parents, I have seen the, the, the confusion around that and really not taking that example and making it my own as so many of us are led to do by resisting that and creating my own relationship using my feminine power that's what really transformed my relationship experience mm -hmm. and I'm really happy that this happens to be the first full moon so before we jump in I just want to say, Kay, you almost perfectly described the energy of this Libra new moon, oh. <laughs> which is so much about being centered in ourselves because each new moon is subtly different. You know, the new moon in Libra next year will be different because different planets are aspecting. But this one in particular is hugely about centering ourselves in our own power to cultivate better relationships with other people, you know, and the more that we can work on our own Selves. It's a very um, sort of healing, um, self-examining sort of new moon. So the more that we can work on our own selves and improve ourselves, that's the energy it brings, um, the better our relationships will be. Um, so taking back one's own power is a very beautiful example you of did. what might happen in this, you know, what intention, what sort of intentions you might set under this new moon so um yes please continue with this new moon in libra um so the new moon in libra is falling at um two degrees of libra on at 7 45 a.m on monday the 26th of september Okay, so when this new moon is coming in on Monday. Yeah, so it's next Monday. And so this is a perfect moment between now and then to start thinking about, you know, what intentions you might set in terms of how you might, you know, what areas of yourself might need improvement in terms of your habits, especially in relation to your body and your alignment of, because there's a lot of, you know, Virgo energy, I will just say, and that is so much about the alignment of your spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical beings. So this moon is so much inviting us to be in our integrity and to be totally aligned on all those levels. Um, and interestingly, of course, because it always works this way, the Aries full moon will be illuminating where we're not in alignment. So it's a really good time to work on, you know, what areas of your life feel out of alignment, you know, and it's also a really beautiful time to feel into your body. This is so much about the body's wisdom, um, this particular new moon. Um, and it's also about, there's a very beautiful alignment between the head and the heart in this um, new moon. So we, you know, so which gives us, the possibility of finding a new relationship to ourselves and to and to find this kind of integrity within ourselves um so yeah it's a it's a very beautiful gentle expansive moon which is i think very much needed at this time because astrologically speaking um a lot of the planets have gone into retrograde this month which means that they slow down and apparently from the earth, it looks as if they're slowing down and stationing. And this is a time in which we're asked to go much more inward and to reassess and reflect, especially on past stuff. Uh, so maybe a lot of past stuff will be coming up um, in the next few months for us to look at. Um, and so this new moon is like this very gentle medicine for dealing with anything that might be coming up and you know because it's hugely energetic in the outside world right now um so if anyone's you know whatever is being triggered in your life this is a very beautiful moon to sit with yourself and you know reflect on where those triggers might come from how do they relate to your early emotional life um yeah it's a really good time to start 
releasing things. And especially, it's a lot about communication and the power of words and loving words to yourself and to others. Um, and so it's a really good time to, you know, start to consider if this old stories and ways of being that you're telling yourself internally, you know, like how hard are you being on yourself or externally? Like, how do I go into the world? Do I still really want to be that person? Is that still really where I'm most comfortable or am I just doing this because it's a habit? Because the moon is all about habits. So it's a really fantastic time to get very clear, to really go inward and sit with your intuition and just reflect on how you how you are in the world um, and whether you're not just in some habitual patterns that this would be a really beautiful time to set an intention to release you know because as you so beautifully say Kay with intentions you just set them and they're kind of magical they have their own energy you know and and this new moon will really help you to get clear about about what those things are and even if you, you don't even have to act on it necessarily, whatever these new ways of being that you that might come up for you, but just allow allow yourself a moment to sort of sit with it because there's a lot of courage in this full moon as well because sometimes it can be challenging to let go of old ways of being because there are comfort zones. The moon is all about our comfort zone. Um, so, yeah, that's some of the energy that it's bringing. I don't know if you want to ask any questions about that because... Well, no, I mean, to be honest... Um, I think you covered so many interesting things that I would like to kind of like pull around a bit if you like. Uh -huh. So particularly with like holding the center, um, I just like to share that, you know, I've actually been observing this with a few clients around particularly abandonment and and witnessing how, you know, when we give our power to other people, what we're actually doing is abandoning ourselves. Absolutely. And I think we have this tendency to think that abandonment is something that's done to us when it's actually, you know, the reality is that other people around you can do or be whatever they want. It's how we choose to treat ourselves uh -huh. whilst being around them that actually um, defines our experience. So um, I think holding, I think this new moon sounds like it gives us a real opportunity to, as you say, observe past scenarios revisiting us in you know in new ways like maybe on the same theme so maybe you know you've got issues with relationships or with money or whatever it might be and and witnessing those triggering events and instead of being caught up in that explosive emotional reaction uh -huh. giving yourself the opportunity to go ah oh, this is this new moon opportunity and I'm actually you know building my resilience to this situation through really anchoring myself in the experience I've already had with this energy. So I know I've had money stuff. I know I've had relationship stuff. And guess what? I moved through all of it. Therefore, I don't need to get as rattled. And uh -huh. I'm going to hold that center in me and trust that I'm going to be able to move through this without knowing how or why. And I don't know, maybe you can shed some light on that. If you did talk about courage, like whether the increased invitation to let go of having the answer, so to speak, um, increased invitation to surrender is part of this energy as well, just through perhaps um, experiences. Not necessarily this full moon. I mean, at this new moon, it's so much about, I mean, it's about what you described and abandonment is a perfect example because that's so much about early childhood, you know, patterns and behaviors because this is so much you know the moon is all about that stuff coming back and you know you can abandon yourself in so many small ways through the day but you know a huge part of this moon is not just being centered but finding ways to actually improve yourself you know you know so how are you going to work with this feeling of abandonment what steps can I take I mean it's a really good new moon for writing things down like you know lists and you know loving kind words to yourself and others but you know if 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 you have had an experience of abandonment you know what would be a really good first thing that you could do in terms of um yeah having more courage in that 
place to stand up for yourself and to realize that it's something that you're, you know, that's an issue for you that is, as you say, about self abandonment. I mean, I really love your mirror work, Kay. My first thing would be sit in the mirror and just, you know, reflect on in what ways is this triggering some really old thing where I was actually a disempowered child, but now I'm not, now I'm an adult and I can, you know, find a different way of relating to this particular dynamic. Mm. Because it's so much about this relationship with the other and, and beginning to create better I mean exactly what you described about your marriage to begin to create better more peaceful harmonious relationships with others through improving ourselves in the way that we need to stand in our power and be in those relationships you know because mm-hmm. what you underwent um, in your marriage was a huge self I mean improvement is probably just too triggering a word anyway but self analysis and you know, self-improvement is a, is a, um, what's that? A rebirth. Well, exactly. I mean, this is very much rebirth energy as well. Mm -hmm. You know, not necessarily as dramatic as that. It's more about, it's more about just really sitting with who we think we are and whether we're still comfortable with that and whether it's time to release it sort of thing. Yeah. And that's really, I'm actually having a lot of clients come out as spiritual and very much about that. as is the full moon huge yeah so I think a lot of people have held shame around their interest in spirituality I have for a long time and you know even though I do this kind of work I still have areas where I feel a bit nervous about going into full woo-woo mode as I call it because of how it might be received but I think you know I actually think that's what a spiritual warrior energy is really all about. It's actually not so much about inflicting your perspective on others. It's more about being comfortable and holding your own, no matter who's around you. Uh And I think that, um, yeah, I think it's really powerful that we are, especially as women being invited to step into a much more integral space. Uh Um, So yeah, there's a couple of other things you talked about in, in terms of communication. Um, and something actually I, I came across today, which was quite interesting, was around bullying. Because what, another thing that comes up frequently with clients is actually bullying of the self. Oh. And, um, and actually, I was listening to a channel of Archangel Raphael um, by Jabin Jafferji, who is exceptional. And he was sharing two perspectives around bullying and one being that, um, you know, bullying can often be misunderstood with some people in that it is um, basically someone who is really struggling to be heard and seen. And therefore, when they do try to express themselves, it comes out really kind of overcharged and in in a way that is intimidating to those around them though it's not maliciously intended and and I think and I know that this was the experience I had with my own mum like when I heard that it just completely summed that up for me because she really struggled with and still does actually expressing emotion and therefore being a mother was a really confronting experience for her. And she came across as a bully most of the time because of that disconnect. Um, Obviously though, this isn't the full extent of it. There are people out there who maliciously um, terrorize others for the need of their own self-validation and, um, you know, to feel powerful, whatever that might be. But, I always, whenever I have a client who's got this narcissistic partner or boss, and I can't help but remind them that it's always a choice to be in that relationship. So it's still bullying of the self in my mind. Um, So yeah, I think it's really interesting that in this new moon, we're being invited to look at our inner narrative as well. Mm, Absolutely. Yeah, I think that's a really powerful thing to consider, you know. That's where all your power can gum, come and go very, very effectively with just the way you talk to yourself. So, Absolutely. I mean, another way, um, I mean, of course, you brought up the perfect example <laughs> for the full moon because there has been astrologically, um, and I'm sure everyone feels it, a, a lot of silencing going on in the bigger, you know, collective and 
where there's this very beautiful energy for seven months it's really unusual that mars the energy that i'm talking about which is all about power and passion and drive it rules aries um is going to be in the sign of gemini which is a planet of communication and words for seven months which is really really unusual so this is like some collective opportunity to find new ways more courageous um ways of speaking and that's going to be beautifully aspected at the leo at the um aries full moon in two weeks time um so that it looks as if it's going to be possible for better communication channels to open up between people which is all about being open and curious and interested in other people's ideas as well as allowing them to be interested in your own and speaking up so funnily enough speaking up is going to be quite big in the um aries full moon amazing so what else can we expect from the full moon now that we seem to oh, have oh well i'll just um oh, so just finish up on the new moon yeah because please. this is a very powerful theme right now um, and it's going to be hugely emphasized next month when I talk about the new moon in Scorpio and the full moon in Taurus because there are certain energies that relate to the moon called the lunar nodes n-o-d-e-s um, and they stay in each sign for 18 months and at the moment they're in Taurus and Scorpio and what they're inviting us to do and it will last until next July is ground, simplify, um, be in the earth, be in nature, um, be strong, be self-reliant, be simple, be simple, be simple, you know, and just go back to mother earth is basically the whole dynamic of this moment. And what's being released is everything that's toxic, is toxic power structures, is all the old shit of our own selves and the collective and I think it's quite evident <laughs> that that's going on now. So this new moon in Libra is also really so much about simplifying, everything simplifying. You know, so if you have all this noise in your head, all these stories that you're telling yourself, all these ways that you're trying to be in the world, just sort of calm your monkey mind, or, you know, calm all the voices down and, and just really simplify and, you know, that's also related to being in your integrity. Like, what is your deepest truth? What is your, you know, highest purpose? Where do you feel, you know, your soul is being called to? All those sorts of questions, you know. And how can, you know, because this new moon is also so much about how can I just be in my heart and, you know, spread love and beauty and harmony through my words, especially written to myself written to others, spoken in my interactions, especially with the natural world, animals, plants, everything. So it's just a beautiful and gentle moon, quite an unusual one for this year because there's been such a lot of electrifying energy. Um, but so a huge theme that it started in January and it will end in July next year or June, um, as I said, is to be grounded, to go back to the earth, to be simple. So when in doubt and be in the heart, oh, how did I forget that? It's the main thing. It's like a huge shift from the head to the heart going on right now. So whenever you're in doubt about setting intentions or, you know, if you're feeling confused about where you should go, I mean, cases is anyway, but it's particularly astrologically true right now. Just go into your heart. Your heart is, is the absolute way right now. Mm, yeah. I mean, to me, the the biggest signal of my ego having taken control of the mental situation or my mental situation is is when things get complicated in my thinking mm, interesting so that's such a big um red flag for me when i'm find myself suddenly doing mental gymnastics about something i'm like oh whoa tiger <laughs> the ego <laughs> has got away with itself and just really you know because i know that when I'm in tune with my highest self and my highest potential, um, my soul self, then I, I trust, right? Because I know, uh, because in that moment, I'm connecting with this kind of spiritual um, network that I'm part of, you know, I'm not separating myself from my experience and thinking I have to survive. And so the more I drop into my heart when I'm in a place of stress, particularly because that's when I'm most likely to drop into ego is to, yeah, to really 
drop back into my heart. And that when I say that, just so I'm clear for people, literally taking your attention to your heart space Mm -hmm. and your heart chakra is what I'm talking about. So that's slap bang in the middle of your chest. You know, sometimes when I talk to people about their heart, they're trying to find it under their left boob. And it's actually (laughs) aim for the middle of your chest and literally taking your awareness to the middle of your chest and and almost feeling into that space, you'll feel a shift in the way that you feel. Um, and if you don't feel that shift immediately, just keep practicing it because it will come. But really, you know, recognizing, being quick to recognize, oh, I'm doing the mental acrobatics. My ego's got control of the situation, which means I've slipped into a place of fear. The best way for me to get out of this is to go into my heart and ask myself, how do I feel? How do I feel about this situation? How do I honestly, honestly feel? Because nine times out of 10, when I say to a client who comes in and tells me their whole story and they're not sure what to do and I'll say to them, what do you actually feel? They know exactly what they want to do. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that sounds like it makes a lot of sense. (laughs) And I think if we're being called into that, all the better because we can all do with that reminder to just simplify life. And actually one thing that pops into my mind was, you know, what could be an impending energy crisis and the fact that so many people are, you know, the discomfort that might inevitably be the result of this energy crisis will you know be a shock to a lot of us who've become quite soft in our domestic you know relationship with heat and cool and even in the last couple of months I myself have become really drawn to getting up early going down to the beach sitting there meditating and it being cold because it's winter here so it's been dark it's been cold it's been rainy at times and just getting out there and actually being there regardless has actually developed a sense of robustness in my system which Mm -hmm. I'm really grateful for now and I think that anything along those lines is only encouraging us to remember our power remember our inner resilience so yeah I think that's worth bearing in mind for whatever you know the full moon might bring (laughs) well the full moon yeah I mean that's a perfect segue but I mean just that story is also perfect for this what I was talking about the nodes you know where we're just being invited to just, as you said, simplify, but it is so much about going back to nature and, and you know, almost to, not almost, actually, to reconnect with the wisdom in us that knows how to be cold in, you know, the ocean at 5 a.m. or, you know, on the beach at, in winter, in the rain, you know. I mean, I did something similar the other day. I was walking um, and I could see storm clouds gathering and I stopped myself from going home and getting my umbrella. I just thought, be in the storm, you know, just weather literally the actual storm and feel what it's like. That is so much the energy of this moment, you know, mm-hmm. to just, because of course, yeah, I mean, you're right, we have all become very soft. And this is so much about all the joys and also, you know, the challenges of nature. I mean, gosh, we're being presented with them all the time right now. So um, yeah, it's very much about that. Um, but yeah, so, so what the full moon brings in particular is beautiful flowing energy where we will be able to have more harmonious relationships, especially if we've done this more internal work of, you know, really getting back to ourselves and aligning ourselves And it's so much about spirit, mind, emotion, and physical selves. Mm -hmm. Um, This whole lunar cycle between the Libran moon and the Aries full moon, which is, again, about standing in our power because Aries is the I am. You know, it's the sign that rules the self. Mm -hmm. And it's like the fresh burst of spring. Um, So it's like all that energy, you know, bursting out and wanting to act and be and do not even to be it just wants to do and act and you know go out into the world and adventure it's rash and um hugely energetic passionate energy um so that energy in this full moon is being united with um very joyful communicative um energy so we will be able to have more flowing communications in our relationships and stronger and more supportive relationships. Um, That's what that new moon is bringing. But it's not about accommodating other people. It's still absolutely standing in our center because it's Aries. So both these moons are 
very much about standing in our own power and being kind and compassionate to others, but not forsaking ourselves in order to do so. So no accommodation for the other, like very much in the self, which can feel hugely uncomfortable for so many women, especially mothers, I will say as a mother myself, you know, to stand in yourself and not accommodate the emotional needs of others is one of, I think, the greatest challenges of women, you know, because our whole culture for at least 2000 years is designed to make us invisible mothers, invisible people, and, you know, invisible. Mm. (laughs) And just to look after everybody else all the time. So and it's a really interesting, interesting new moon for, for women. Yeah, I think it's interesting that, you know, you raise that mother energy because I think it's bizarre. I'm not a mother yet, but I have actually been hearing my inner voice saying over the last couple of weeks in particular, step into your mother energy, Kay, step into your mother energy. And actually it's, it's you know, we have our understanding of the matriarchal and the patriarchal. So ruled by women, ruled by men. And actually what we're moving into is this matricentric energy, which is actually um, mother energy, which is the tribe seeking what is best for the tribe. So it actually, you know, looking at every situation from a perspective of, well, how do we all come out of this nourished? You know, so, and I know you've told me about this, you know, as opposed to this power over, it's all power with. And it sounds like that energy is just really being brought up for us to reconnect with. And it's, you know, the only place that can really come from is when each of us as individuals recognizes our need, our need to remother ourselves. Yeah, totally. And, you know, Men and women. <clears throat> hundred percent. Yes. And I think, you know, really connecting with a sense of, you know, I can't use the same energy I used before to solve an old problem. Uh So what new energy can I bring in to solve this issue? And as Uh we touched on earlier, you know, holding that center, you know, if you've got old established um, or old rather familiar is a much better word familiar challenges around money or, or love and these things pop back up for you what's the new energy you can use and, and to be very very clear what I mean by that is observing how you feel about that challenge in your body so fear anger confusion whatever the familiar energetic response to the situation is observing that and then deciding what do I choose to feel about this? Okay. And from a mother energy, generally moving into love. So as challenging as that can be in some situations, and I'm no stranger to being challenged by changing my energy towards somebody, but when you move into love, it's like you elevate yourself above that really tight right or wrong energy of righteousness and unfairness and they owe me or they should this and when you move into love you move into unconditional love because you move you transcend beyond that struggle and so say it's an energy around um, a partner or a child child are probably easier to move into love but then take it to the unconditional love place you know the mother space but from a place of maybe not seeing yourself as having been conditioned to be suppressed or whatever the thing might be, but rather moving into that mattress centric mother energy that has ancient wisdom deeply coded into it and embodying that fully in your being. And, and, you know, largely moving into acceptance and surrender of, of whoever is involved in this issue and or with yourself over a money problem, perhaps that's super triggering and just being very, kind and loving towards yourself about the situation and how you want to respond to it um yeah i think really observing and being conscious of how i can embody mother energy it will be a really helpful thing to move through this and you just beautifully described what i was referring to earlier um (laughs) of course um at the outset which is about the need to make our moons more conscious because basically you've just described astrologically 
uh, sort of working with your moon energy, bringing up your moon energy by positive moon energy, positive mother energy. So whatever you were referring to, whatever was, you know, limiting or triggering in your earliest relationship with your actual real life mother that you're now remothering, that is absolutely bringing up your moon to a higher octave or, you know, a more loving, self-loving place. And that's, I feel what we're all, all of us men and women being asked to do right now is to become much more conscious of those inherit or not, in, not inherited, those early childhood patterns and habits and things we picked up in relation to our mothers. Because how can you be an empowered mother in this culture? You know, it's a real struggle. I'll speak from experience. Um, and, but it's something that's really important to do both for actual children and for ourselves. Um, and yeah, so because we don't have very many role models of appropriate mothers, you know, of mothers who are very caring, but then allow their children to go off and make their own mistakes, you know, who know their boundaries, basically. There's a lot about boundary setting with moon energy, you know, it's emotional. Um, so finding the appropriate measure as a mother. And I should also add that, yes, this is hugely a, about the mother in this moment. And, you know, it's, there's also a real need to internally father better. Um, and these two energies will very beautifully come up around Christmas. So um, because we can have the opportunity to do that as well. Yeah. And actually, it's interesting you saying that because I think the it's challenging for people to reconnect with the divine mother and even more so with the, I, the concept of a divine father energy. Mm -hmm. That's benevolent and supportive. Yeah. Yeah. And absolutely grace actually and I think um you know it's like we're going on this kind of educational journey where totally. you know, the planets are like right guys we're going to whip you into shape <laughs> and we're going to just bring all this stuff up to um we're going to educate you on your divine mother energy by creating situations where you need to embody it in order to have the smoothest possible ride uh -huh. and and we're going to save up the divine father energy for later in the year apparently <laughs> <laughs> well there's always you know two beautiful moons around christmas that connect to both the mother and the father energy so um but yeah we'll talk about that more but i was also just going to add in in terms of you know your delineation of the ages um david farrell this amazing plant medicine healer um made a very be beautiful reference to that which i thought was so simple and clear and really resonated with me which was we had her story which was those matriarchal ones then we had his story now it's our story mm. and I just thought that was so beautiful to think of That's this moment as our story because it's so astrologically mm. in tune because yeah. it's all about the age of Aquarius and you know universal sister and brotherhood and you know the family yeah. of humankind and all kind you know family where we're connected to all the beings on this earth you know yeah I love that so the earth family yeah, and for those of you that don't know what we mean by her story, um, her story is basically a female narrative um, that, was it Jane Hardwick Collins that wrote that? Oh, I don't think it was her. Well, it's, it refers to those earlier prehistorical yeah. matriarchal cultures that you referenced and that I referenced with yeah. the Noble and the 13-month lunar year. So it's yeah. just a punning on history, which is his story Amazing. and her story. And now it's yeah. our story. I, I just thought it was a very beautiful way of bringing those three things together. I think, you know, it's, it amazes me how much we have available to us to understand ourselves on deeper, more powerful levels when we're willing to look. Uh -huh. And, you know, understanding how the moon, which I was never taught to connect with on any level, um, in spite of being a girl with a, a cycle I mean the clues in the title like <laughs> never once told by my mum to look up into the sky and recognize that my body was in tune with this you know planet that moved across the sky so it's not a planet is it the moon um but you know what I mean um yeah quite incredible is there anything else that you'd like to share um, yeah I mean two things and one related to that but the other one is about the real energy of this um, Aries full moon because it's so much about healing and it's connected to the, my, one of my favorite asteroids, Chiron, who is the healer teacher. 
Um, and he's all about the alignment of spirit, mind, emotions, and body. So this whole lunar cycle that we're talking about for this spring is about that alignment. Mm -hmm. And he is particularly asking, oh, this full moon in Aries, and I should add that it's at 7.45 a.m. on Monday, the 10th of October. Um, and it's so much about a sort of... Uh, That's Australian like, time, I'm guessing. Yes, yes. Well, this is Southern Hem Hemisphere time I'm talking about. Sydney. Actually, I'm talking about Sydney. So for those in other states, um, you might have to, you know, calculate the relationship of your time, you know, just put it forward or back or... Um, but, yeah, so there's a big shift in energy coming with this full moon exactly on the same day. And it's so the moon is asking is saying that something has to give, you know, so something will be released. I mean, that's a full moon action anyway, or energy. Um, and it's so much about moving forward, like the collective is moving forward. This is, you know, a hugely powerful planet. One of my favorite planets, Pluto, is going forward suddenly on that very day. And it's been in retrograde for a long time. So, and this is the collective. This is the you know, birth, death, transformational energy of the underworld. So you will be by this stage standing in your center, fully aligned, you know, as much as possible, no perfection required here, just good intentions and effort. There's a lot of effort around these two moons. Um, and so that you're standing firmly grounded when this plutonic energy starts moving, because that's going to be dictating the next moons which are hugely powerful and we will have the joy of hearing all about them but the, the other quick thing i was going to say and it's a perfect way to conclude is yeah. what you just said then is so beautiful Kay, that you never thought to go out and look at the moon because that's really my huge invitation to everybody with this um you know it's not even so much about listening to all of this this is all really important the most important thing to do is to start to become acquainted with the moon in its cycles when it goes into the dark, you know, and that that's a time for going inward and quiet. And then as it um, waxes, you know, that's our energy expands out into the world. And then there's the full moon bringing everything into illumination. And then, you know, it starts waning and our energy, you know, we shed things and start to go inside and begin the cycle again. It's just such a beautiful thing to be connected with. And you can start to tune in, you know, how do you feel under this um, new moon in Libra? Do you feel more convivial? Do you feel more like relating to people? Do you feel like you want more beauty in your life? Do you feel you want more harmony? You know, how is that Libra New Moon actually making you feel? Is it having an effect on you? You know, it's really interesting to tune into those energies and under the Aries full moon. Am I feeling, you know, aggressive or driven? What and how am I going to use my energy today? You know, am I feeling really energized? Um, so they're really good things to think about. Um, but yeah, if you can go outside and look at the night sky and and watch the moon it's it's quite a quite a ride yes absolutely what a ride today has been thank you so much <laughs> Jane. i so appreciate your insight um not just from an astrology perspective but really you know that intuition that is so powerfully obvious and informative in relation to you know what's going on on um on all these more powerful potent levels astrologically speaking and yeah it's been I think very helpful and revealing I have always had an interest in astrology but it's always been too overwhelming to be honest and um just having this conversation has just brought that you know where I'm at right now in in relation to the moon so much more to life in a way that this month will be so much more meaningful so um yeah that's thank fantastic you. Yeah, for sure. Thank you so much. That's really, really helpful. Um, and I'm sure that our listeners will feel the same way. We, um, as I said, we're going to be doing this every single month for the next six months. Um, and yeah, if you have any particular questions around what we've shared today, please do send them in to me. Um, hello at kwilson.love. And um, yeah, I'm sure Jane would be more than happy to speak to that next time as well. Um, but yes, it would be, sorry, Jane. I was just on. going to say, you just read my mind because I was just going to say that. Ah. <laughs> you know, That's if anyone has any questions, there's been yeah. a lot of stuff, a lot, a lot, a lot of yeah. stuff. Um, yeah. I'm more than happy to answer because, you know, it's a really fun and illuminating 
way to be in the world um, and empowering. So, you know, if anyone's feeling thrown and put off, uh, please just email questions. No, not at all. I'm sure everyone will be quite inspired after this. So thank you so much, Dane. And I'm already excited for next month's instalment. And, um, and yes, Please, by all means, guys, be um, encouraged to have your own little ceremony around either the new moon or the full moon. Um, and by that, it can be just literally lighting a candle and writing down a few intentions or not even writing, just taking some time to close your eyes and think about what you want to, you know, start calling in with this new moon, given all of these different energies that are available to you. Um, and then again, on the full moon um, and maybe doing it outside might be a lovely idea if I was going to say weather permitting, but even if not, potentially. <laughs> and sometimes it's very beautiful, not necessarily in these moons, but sometimes it's very beautiful to do it in community, you know, with yeah. others. Like, yeah, absolutely. I used to have full moon ceremony, you know, parties with my friends. It was so fun. Yeah, um, completely. Mm. Yeah, I, in fact, got invited once by a beautiful brother to go and howl at the full moon. And there's a group of us that went and stood on the <laughs> <That's> <laughs> and so, howling. It was perfect. Very organized howling, but it was so brilliant. Um, so, yes, make it your own. I think. Yes, it's absolutely. <laughs> um, and yeah, in the meantime, if you have an interest in really stepping into your own self mastery and really understanding yourself in a much more powerful and potent way and transforming the relationship that you have with love, money, your health, primarily yourself. Um, I am going to be running the Alchemize Method on the 10th of October. And if you'd like to join me for that 10 week journey of personal transformation, I would love to hear from you. You can again, get me on hello at kwilson.love or please just go to my website um www.kwilson.love forward slash t-a-m hyphen i-n and you can find all the information there in the meantime sending you all lots of love thank you so much jane for your time and your wisdom super excited for next month already and um pleasure. and can i just add that the alchemized method could not be more perfectly timed to start on the full moon in aries as pluto goes direct Oh, really? That is all. Pluto is the planet of alchemy. Oh, I mean, okay. everybody take you this. This would be the perfect time to do that because uh -huh. <laughs> that's well, quite incredible. Astrologer. And Jane has done the alchemized method, so she knows what you're in for. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, yeah, sending you lots of love and looking forward to connecting again next month. Take care. Thanks so much, Kay. Bye, everybody.